But let's get into it. Joel Olstein finding a, a thieves found what was it six hundred thousand dollars in the walls of the church. How did these thieves know the money was there? If you ask me, it's an inside job. These are people that he probably trusted. Your local gang, your, your your local criminal that has to do the dirty work. You see, every honest, honest industry works with the black hand. The black hand being the crime syndicates of whatever city, whatever town they're in. Joe Olstein is nothing special. He's going to conform to the normality of life. He needs that element. Who else do you think kept in 2004 during Hurricane Katrina or 2005, whenever the fuck that was, who do you think kept those people out of his church? Remember, he didn't shelter anyone in that mega church that holds 40, 30,000 fucking people. No, 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 no. He's better than that. So on the screen, we're going to play the video of the story, and let's roll with it. Fuck it. We're praying for you. The inspirational messages pack his Houston church with thousands. But this morning, Pastor Joel Osteen in the spotlight with a money mystery. But I mean, it was just like unbelievable, the things he was telling us that they found in the wall. During his morning radio show, host George Lindsay took a call from a man who identified himself as a plumber who recently worked inside Osteen's Lakewood Church. The station, 100.3 in Houston, asked callers to chime in about interesting discoveries. There was a loose toilet in the wall, and uh, we removed the tile. Well, they removed the tile. I uh, went to go remove the toilet, and I moved some insulation away, and uh, about 500 envelopes fell out of the wall. Envelopes full of cash. 500 envelopes filled with cash in the freaking walls of this megachurch. Un un unaccounted for. Now, the separation of church and state, churches don't pay taxes. So I wonder where this money came from. Why was he hiding the money? Cash checks and money orders. I went ahead and uh, contacted the uh, maintenance supervisor that was there, and uh, I went ahead and turned it all in. The church confirmed the find in a statement writing, an undisclosed amount of cash and checks were found, adding they notified police, but Lakewood has no further comment at this time. Praise Jesus, they found the money. Praise them. That's what's coming next. That's what's coming next. Houston police wouldn't share how much was recovered, but did state Friday evidence from the recovered check suggests this November case is connected to a March 9th, 2014 theft report of undisclosed amounts of money at the church. That money disappeared from... This is the inside job that I hinted at. There was a case years ago about missing money. Theft. This motherfucker is stealing from his own church. Oh my gosh. How is this not infuriating to the religious people of the world? How has the Pope not condemned this man or this church of their actions? Deceitfulness? Gluttony? All of the above. These guys are sinners and they're leading religious institutions. I'm a church safe. And while police launched an investigation, no arrests were ever made. With regular services planned for Sunday, police documented the evidence and left it with Lakewood staff. Look how big that church is. And this this guy didn't want to house anybody during the hurricane. Or uh, what Hurricane Katrina was it? It might have been that hurricane a couple years back that hit Houston. The one that Trey the Tr Truth and all those rappers were helping with. Killer Mike and all of them. But call the case an active investigation. 
Now, there was a push to get that plumber some reward money after that incredible fine, but Crime Stopper says that the expiration for the tips had already passed uh, and that if you are to hand over a tip, it must lead to an arrest. And as of right now, Peter Christen, no arrests, no suspects named. Send it Unbelievable. Back to you. Morgan Chesky, thank you. What they really want to say is this guy is stealing from his own fucking church. This is what's sad. This is really what's sad. Joel Olstein's net worth. Look at that grin right there. I'd be smiling ear to ear too. If I'm worth a hundred million dollars, how does he get that money? How has he made that money? It's a lot of envelopes hidden. That's how he's made that fucking money. And since the separation of church and state where the, the state doesn't have to account for the finances that churches get with donations, he can hide all the money he wants. But doesn't the Bible have verses, Bible verses, over false prophets? Because right now I'm feeling like Joel Olstein is a false prophet. Let's go to it. 2 Corinthians 11, 13 through 15. For such men who are false prophets, deceitful workmen, disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for even Satan disguised himself as an angel of light. So it is no surprise if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. Their end will correspond to their deeds. Oh, this is all in all online. I'm not a religious guy. I'm very spiritual, but not religious. Matthew 7.15. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. Or ravenous wolves, I should say. Matthew 24.24. For false Christs and false prophets will arise and perform great signs and wonders, so as to lead astray, if possible, even the elect. This is where state comes in again. There's no arrest made because they're all in on it. The crooks are all in. The politicians, the PD, the religious leaders of the area, the crooks. They're all in on it. Peter 2-1. But false prophets also arose among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the master who, brought, who bought them, bringing upon themselves swift destruction. Oh, I can go on and on and on. See, the Bible talked about false prophets quite a lot.